Story time of the time I had a stalker. Now, this was about junior year in high school, and me and my friends planned to go see fireworks on the 4th of July. And one of their friends that they went to like kindergarten, elementary school, middle school with, was visiting from out of state. And he came with us and he was really nice and really funny. We got I was also very naive back then, so I didn't really pick up on when a guy liked me. I literally thought that the world was butterflies and rainbows and that everyone was lovely. And he kept trying to start conversation with me and I mentioned wanting a funnel cake and he bought one for me, but me being naive and oblivious was just like, oh, he's so nice. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm realizing that it was sophomore year because I couldn't drive. Because I remember that he drove me and my friend to my house, meaning he had my address. So he also asked for my snap and I gave it to him. I also heard that he was a really nice guy and he had a lot of at-home issues, including an abusive father. And so, you know, I felt really bad for him because he was so nice. He also lived out of state, so I didn't think he was going to try anything. But since I'm done with my makeup, part two next. Part two of my soccer story. So I left off with him giving me and my best friend a ride home and basically the next day he started snapping me and it was just normal conversation but then out of nowhere he responded to one of my snaps saying cute. I told my best friend to respond with a picture of her face so we just pretended like I never saw it. But then he goes, did you see what I said earlier? So I said no and then I just didn't open his snaps for like a day. And I told my guy friends that introduced me to him, hey, like, can you let him know that I'm not interested in dating? Because I didn't date in high school. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to tell him that you're not interested in him. Because if you just say, like, you're not dating, he's going to try and change that. So he told this guy that I wasn't interested in him. And this guy blocks him. And they've been friends since elementary school. And then it gets weirder. So why did I keep talking to him? I don't know. I was just way too nice back then. And I kind of felt bad. He started asking me what songs I liked, and he would record himself playing a full-on guitar cover while singing the song, we can't forget the singing, to me. He would be sending me these full-on, like, three-minute long covers. And I was just trying to be nice. I was like, oh yeah, you're really talented. Then, eventually, he tells me that he likes me, and I reject him. And at this point, I was only responding to his snaps like once in a while, and he confronted me about that. He's like, why aren't you responding to my messages? Why are you leaving me undelivered? Why haven't you responded? It's been like three days. So this just sounds like a really weird guy, right? But no, he becomes obsessive. So that'll be the last and final part, part three. Part three of my soccer story. I left off with him basically harassing me and getting upset when I didn't answer his snaps and text messages. And of course, I told him multiple times that I'm not interested in dating and he's like, oh yeah, I just think you're a cool person and I wanna keep talking to you, is that okay? And I was just like, yeah, sure. But he would still proceed to flirt with me, call me cute, send me song covers. And then one day, he all of a sudden starts talking about moving to Virginia to like, get closer to me. He asked me if I thought he should move. And I said, do whatever you think is comfortable. Because we were in high school, I didn't think he could actually move here. One random day, he snaps me saying that he's moving to Virginia. And I was so shocked. I talked to my parents about it and I was like, can I just say that my parents are really strict and they might block you? And of course they were like, yeah, of course. So I said, hey, my parents are like really strict. So if you ever get blocked or if I ever unadd you or anything, just know it's probably them. And then after he opened the message, um, I waited a couple hours and then I blocked him. I blocked him on everything you can imagine and he still managed to message me through Venmo. I blocked him on Venmo too, but if you watch my other parts, you would know he also knew where I lived started working at one of my go-to restaurants, and he would just keep popping up everywhere. Eventually it stopped. I don't know if he moved back, I really don't know what happened, but it stopped. After like three years. I refused to have my father walk me down the aisle. Get ready with me, anonymous story time! I got married exactly three weeks ago to my husband, who I was dating for four years. Growing up, my father was never around, and after my mom and my father split up, my dad ended up finding a new partner and had a family of his own, and basically just played dad with that side of the family. After a very rocky road between my both parents and, you know, them meeting other people, having kids with other people, my parents ended up, you know, talking it out and they ended up getting back together. I know, I'm shocked too. <laughs> Not only did my parents get back together, but they remarried and again, I'm very shocked because 
I don't know what's up in the air. I don't know what happened, but I mean, I guess I have my family back together. The only problem is my dad was never a part of my family, so I am holding a grudge, and it's very difficult because I have a lot of love for him, but it's very hard to express that love because he was never, you know, there for me. I think what really has me holding a grudge on my father is the fact that he left me, he left our family to have another family, and it's just like, I mean, we could have all been family, but you decided to choose them, so it makes me feel like I wasn't worthy. Anyway, so prior to my wedding, I had a conversation with my father-in-law, and in that conversation, I basically asked him if it would be okay for him to walk me down the aisle. My father-in-law was very skeptical and undecisive only because I asked him and not my father. My father-in-law had questions, and one of his biggest concerns and questions was why me and not your actual father and i basically told him that i don't have the greatest relationship with my father and i want a father figure to walk me down the aisle this was one of those tricky situations where if my father-in-law said no i would totally be fine because i don't want him to feel uncomfortable but he said yes I knew asking my father-in-law was going to trigger some people, but respectfully, this is my decision and I quite frankly don't care what anybody else says because this is my story and this is the person that I want to walk me down the aisle. My mom was very disappointed, but she did understand. My father didn't say anything. Um, I don't know what he would say if he were to say something, but um, yeah, I just preferred my father-in-law. Fast forward to my wedding day. Everything was beautiful everything that i asked for was gorgeous the wedding planner you know exceeded my expectation and i'm very grateful but here's the problem the day of my wedding comes and i am dancing with my maid of honor and my dad's son comes up to me keep in mind this is my half brother this is the son that my dad had with the other girl before he got back with my mom so basically my half brother came up to me and says that i am an awful human being because i took away such a vulnerable moment from my father and i understand where everyone is coming from but i feel like everyone always wants us to take someone else's feelings into consideration but your own I feel like my entire life, I lived a life trying to please people and it never got me anywhere. And now that I'm actually, you know, standing up for myself, you know, not getting walked all over, suddenly it's a problem. And again, I understand where everyone is coming from, but I just wish people knew where I was coming from as well. The reality is, if my parents never got back together, I guarantee you I wouldn't be talking to my father. But... It's like all of a sudden people expect me to be okay with things, especially because my parents got together literally like six months before my actual wedding. So like what makes you think I'm gonna just give my dad that privilege, you know? Trust me, I would have loved to have my own father, but the reality is he never tried. I'm also aware that I don't have to explain myself to anybody, but you know how family is. I feel like they're more nosy than anything else. And I feel like moments like these is where someone should earn it. I don't feel like just because you're my dad, I should be forced to have you walk me down the aisle if I didn't have a relationship with you and you left me and you just expect to have, you know, that privilege, then I'm sorry, but that does not flow with me. Again, you guys can agree to disagree, but this is just my experience, my perspective. Personally, this is my wedding. I don't feel like I made the wrong decision. I can invite and have whoever I want at my wedding. But if you think I am a bad daughter, let me know down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. What would you have done? Would you force yourself to just, you know, have your dad at the wedding, although he was never involved in your life? Or was I the bad person?